Welcome back. I know it's been a while, but hey ho. Today, as the title suggests, we're going to try and drill an input gear. And if you're wondering why that's a problem, you might want to watch this. Let's get on with it. I initially wanted to put this input gear straight in, but I can't. As you can see, these teeth are wider than these ones. And also these teeth are a lot thicker than these ones, so they're not going to quite marry up. Also, the dog teeth are different, I don't know if that makes a difference. But anyway, let's get into what we need. I've seen online that you can use masonry bits like this. Obviously you've got to put a particular grind on them and sharpen them. But apparently they are usable. Other ways to do it, you can use... Uh, tile cutting drills, uh, such as diamond tipped ones, but these are a little bit cheaper, and I think from what I've seen, they work a bit better. So, as for sizes of drills, I've just bought a 5mm to pilot it, and then a 10mm for the actual finished side. Next thing to do is find out where the position of the holes should be, as per this one. So what I've done is I've drawn it out already. Whether you can make that out or not, I don't know. 10mm diameter hole, 52mm in from the end of the dog teeth to the centre. Yeah, and they're obviously centred and there's four holes going all the way around that diameter there. Before we start drilling, I need to make a small jig to hold this flat on the pillar drill because I don't have a vice for it. So. I've made up this shape, which should just sit on that there, like that. And this bottom edge should sit level with the bottom of the gears, so that should hold it perfectly vertical. So, I've got the shape cut out, that's how this is going to work. It's going to locate on these two surfaces here. And just sit like that. So when we're drilling down on this surface, it's going to stay vertical. Next thing to do is cover these bearings up so that none of the swarf can get in. Alternatively, you could take them off, but it seems pointless to me. So seal the bearings off with some duct tape just to keep the dust from getting in that's all um, and I've also marked the positions of the holes I'm going to put three in around the diameter across here so all we're going to do now is use the grinder and just make a little flat just for the drill to locate on as we start drilling because we can't center punch it because it's hardened That's all it needs to be, just a tiny flat spot just for your drill. Okay, so we've got the gear here in the jig. Quite happy with that. And from what I've seen online, some people say that you don't need to sharpen your drill bits. And some people say you do. So I've sharpened two of them, which is those two. And I've left these two as is out of the packet. So we'll try these first and see if you do need to sharpen them. I'll just show you the difference in the grind if you can see this on the camera. Hopefully you can pick that up. The one on the right is more like what you'd find on a traditional metal sharpening drill. The one on the left is just as it is out of the box. First things first we'll try the one that we haven't sharpened and 
Let's see how it does. The drill speed's set at about 1800 RPM, so that should be enough. Probably. Alright, so. And if we applied fairly decent pressure there, and I don't know if you'll be able to see this. But it has marked it but not it's not really done much at all so we'll try the one that we have sharpened if we have a better run at it well to be fair Eating straight into it, so let's just do that. Yeah, straight in, no messing. Right, we'll get it through. No dramas. So that second hole we drilled has actually ruined this drill bit. So what I've done is I've resharpened the other one that wasn't sharp. We'll give that a will, see what happens. Now we've got everything piloted with the 5mm, time to go through with the 10mm. Okay, now it's back on the bench and cleaned up. I think it's time we spoke about the things we've learnt. So I'm going to move this one back. Firstly, drilling these holes isn't as simple as I first thought. It's alright breaking through the surface, going through the middle, but as soon as you hit the splines, it tends to smash the drill bit. So, what I would advise is use smaller drills and use more of them so start at 3 then go 5, 7, 10 maybe I went from 5 to 10 and that was causing me a lot of issues I smashed both 10mm masonry bits I had to go and pick up another one to finish drilling off so that's number 1 number 2 make sure you've got something to deburr the inside with the inside of the splines Obviously you want it to be nice and free going onto the output shaft. And lastly, it's if I was to do this again, I would take the bearings off. Because even though I'd taped up both ends and tried to do my best, they still got us warping them, so I'm going to have to order some new bearings and reset the input gear. But other than that, I think it's alright. It might save you a few quid if you've got an older transfer box like this. Or the fact that the 1.6 to 1 transfer box that I've got, which this gear is out of, 
you can't buy a cross drilled input gear so you, you would have to do it yourself or get somebody else to do it that's all from me this time I think I think next video will be rebuilding the extension housing on the gearbox because if you saw the short video that I did it's uh, yeah a bit shitty so until then take it easy and I'll see you in the next one